And uh, so Guillaume will talk to us about uh, one of the new OW2 projects uh, which came this year. So it's one of the new 2012 projects called OW2 Utilities. Uh, okay, I, I'm not sure why I'm on the squat uh, presentation line because uh, I think it's more a project spotlight anyway. So um, I, I, we will walk uh, around this uh, new project, OW2 Utilities. And uh, what is the goal of the utilities project? Um, we have some kind of motto for utilities. And, uh, because your code, a code should be wrote, uh, written only once, and because your code should be well tested, and because your code should be shared. And this is the main reason of the existence of the utilities project. So maybe a bit of genesis of history uh, could help you to understand. Uh, utilities project is not new. It was born in 2006 inside the EasyBeans project. We use it as an incubator project. And uh, it is quite used in uh, industry grade, uh, enterprise grade project. Uh, for example, it's used in Jonas, Jasmine, EasyBeans, Shelby, Jasmine for years. So it's uh, industry ready. Um, it has been extracted from the EasyBeans project in 2008, and we have up to 35 relays up to today. So it's a quite active project, and we have a lot of modules. So uh, we'll walk around uh, some of the modules uh, we have in OW2 utilities, uh, but we won't walk uh, for all because uh, I think we have around uh, 40 modules on 50 minutes is so short. So we have some quite basic stuff, uh, which I just want to mention. Uh, we have some stuff around internationalization on logging system. So it's quite like uh, SLF4G, uh, 4J API. We have stuff uh, also around XML parsing. Uh, I will let you uh, extract information from, from this slide, but it's how to obtain a parser on how to uh, easily uh, parse a document. Based on this, we have some uh, conf XML configuration component, which uh, basically maps Java objects to XML, so you can read your XML and directly have object instance that you could easily use, some kind of simple JXB. Uh, we have some encoding and decoding stuff around base64, uh, file to URL conversion tools uh, on some also some uh, cluster.aware object input stream. So it was just to be mentioned. Uh, I, I will talk more about some more interesting projects. Uh, nowadays, uh, everybody's using annotations, but annotation has to be read from the code to be useful, so it's uh, interesting to have some annotation processor on in utilities we are providing. Uh, that kind of tool. Um, it's simply an engine which uh, traverses uh, the classes and interfaces of an object instance. It's supports in inheritance. So I'll give you some code example. You just have to uh, instantiate a processor. You had some uh, annotation handler which will react to the presence of annotation uh, in the code. And you process an instance. And your handler will be called for each annotation uh, found. So it, it's, it's quite easy to use. We also have some uh, interesting event system, uh, which has the main uh, capabilities and interesting capabilities to uh, support asynchron asynchronous events. Uh, so you can see this like a storied, unstoried, topic notification system. It's hierarchical, it's multi-threaded, you have some dispatchers who fires event to a topic, and you have event listener which will uh, uh, which subscribe to a topic and will be um, uh, will be activated synchronously or asynchronously uh, if the event uh, is uh, fired. So a quick schema uh, to better understand with some code. Uh, you have an event service uh, on which you will register your event provider, your dispatchers. Uh, dispatchers are used uh, as event source 
So the one who is firing the event will fire the event through the dispatcher. And asynchronously, dispatchers will call uh, the event listener which are associated. And everything uh, is going through the event service which is some kind of a bus. So you have a loose coupling between dispatcher and uh, listeners. Uh, we also have some uh, pool API inside uh, utilities. So it's a simple pooling API to reuse your inject object instances. It's thread safe. We have two implementation ready. Uh, first one, which is synchronous. So when you start the pool uh, object instance are created uh, at startup. Uh, uh, but we also have some more advanced implementation, uh, which is asynchronous. So um, instances are created uh, on the fly when, requ when requested by uh, separate threads. So there is an exam a code example um, where uh, you can see that we are, you are using, you are implementing a pool factory which is responsible to create instances and you have a pool component which is using this uh, factory and the pool component is uh, the one with the intelligence and he will ask the uh, factory to create instance or delete uh, disposed instance. So it's quite easy to implement and to have for free a uh, pool system. You also have, well, we also have some uh, viable processing system in uh, utilities. It's uh, very useful when you have to extract a variable or expression from a string from a string. So for example here you have a simple expression, hello, speaker name, and speaker name is a variable. And you want to replace uh, this expression with its real value. So it's based on property resolver, which will have to provide a value for a given expression. And this property resolver are composable, so you can uh, mix them. And you support recursion, so you can have uh, variables with variable inside. So also I give a short example. So you create a, a substitution engine and you create a chain resolver which will have two resolver inside which are dedicated to resolve the speaker.name expression on another one which is uh, dedicated to resolve a date expression. So you see it's very easy to implement uh, a resolver and you just have to call the engine.substitute method with the expression to have uh, the uh, to have the value back. So very easy when you have to uh, to resolve to substitute expression variables uh, in a string. Uh, we also have a resource abstraction. It's a uniform API for resource consumption. Uh, for example, we are supporting out of the box. Uh, the directory system, jar file, OSGI bundles, it's extensible. So in fact, it's simply a common API for that represent an archive. An archive is something which contains other files, contains resources. And so you can uh, get the name, the URL of the archi archive. You can get the resources as input stream or as a URL. And it's closable. Uh, so it's very easy when you have to uh, abstract yourself from the format of the uh, resources you want to access. So it was used uh, in EasyBeans uh, first to be able to deploy directory which are uh, constructed like a GB jar on real GB jar which are uh, jar files. And then we integrated the uh, OSGI uh, bundle uh, parts. So uh, everything is bundled in utilities because we are using OSGI in a lot of places. Uh, so we have uh, around 20 common libraries uh, which are wrapped as OSGI bundles. So you have some commands, uh, some Apache commands stuff. Uh, we have Java Assist which is a bytecode uh, generator. The reference implementation of JAXB, which is provided as bundle, JGroups, GSCH, Zookeeper, Bunsy, Colton, and so on. Um, it's, okay, thank you. It's, 
uh, it's it's real bundle because we are, we have done them correctly. They have exported uh, package with version verified imports, so they are well done. And all of the modules of uh, utilities are also uh, OSGI bundles with version API and uh, exported content. So um, we we. The, the, as I said earlier, the goal of utilities is to share code. Um, uh, we have done our part, so we have exposed it to everyone. And um, now uh, we want you to to use it. So I play some anonymous quotes from from anonymous. <coughs> so you can find the code uh, in Guitar Use. You have one repository for each for each module, so you'll see a lot of repositories. We have a website which is at the moment uh, <coughs> quite empty, but we are, right, we are waiting for you for some documentation. Uh, we also have a continuous integration using Bamboo, and also we have a, a Jira instance for uh, for bugs. Thank you.